we start, oh, awesome. Thanks for recording. Um, before we start. Uh, otherwise, it'll be locally. It ends up taking out, up a lot of your space if you record it locally. So it's always uh, easier to do in the cloud. Awesome. Okay. So before we um, host webinars or record anything for video, we do power poses so that we get out of our own heads and um, start to like embody the energy that we want to bring to the video. So I'm going to make you do something really stupid <laughs> and I want you to stand okay. up. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to stand up. Um, oh, hey, Loyola sweatshirt. Okay, and you're gonna put your <laughs> arms above your head like your superwoman. Mm -hmm. All right, and you're gonna channel all of that power into the video that we're about to produce. Are you feeling it? Feeling mm -hmm. the energy? All right, and now you're yes. gonna do the Wonder Woman, um, like uh, what is it? Fist on your hips. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Just taking it all in. Cool. Now we're good. We're ready to go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, no, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I'm gonna ask you if you could <laughs> move your camera a bit further away from your face, just so we could center you a little bit more. Is good? Yeah, that looks so good. Oh my God, are you a model? <laughs> this looks so good. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to ask you um, the questions in the document. Um, I might ask you a few more questions than the ones you um, answered previously, but we will just kind of move right through it. And I am going to mute myself um, when you are talking so that we don't get any feedback from my side. So are you ready? Ready as it can be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mia, why did you join Why Vote? Oh, I didn't hear the last part of your question. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, why did you join Why Vote uh, slash NGP? I joined Why Vote because of its initiative. I knew how important voting was, but I didn't know how essential it was. So when I joined Wivo, I knew I wanted to focus on specific issues and how I can make my local representatives accountable to solving those issues. Okay, okay wait, you're on mute again. <laughs> I, I love that I you do most of my day and I still can't get that. <laughs> um, so that was amazing. I'm gonna ask you to do it again, just slightly more slowly um, so that we can hear every beat that you're hitting. Um, so I'll uh, ask it again, and then I'll mute myself. So why did you join YVote slash NGP? I joined YVote because of its initiative. I knew voting was important, but I didn't know how essential it was. I know about civic issues, and I want to know how to hold my local representatives accountable to solving these issues, in addition to having important conversations with my peers. Oh, my God. <laughs> I felt like I was watching CNN or something. You're so good. <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> All right, so the next question is, is there a particular issue or set of issues that you have explored through YVO slash NGP that have fascinated you? Why? And how have your views on that issue or those issues evolved since joining YVO and NGP? Yes, there's two issues specifically that have grown my interest in since I've been in my vote, and that's criminal justice and climate justice. Criminal justice specifically because that's really what got me into social activism when I started realizing how it directly impacted the Black and Brown community, especially being from the Bronx and learning about stories about Rikers Island and the, um, the police facility and how it's not always just. I really became interested in that, and that was the first group I joined when I joined my vote. And it increased my interest because we looked into the history and the roots of it, and we really learned what bills and policies can really work to help better the Bronx, New York, and this nation. And in addition to climate justice, I knew that climate change is the most pressing issue of our generation right now, but I didn't know much about it. And to have peers around me that were interested in the same conversation and that knew more about it, it was really engaging and it was really informative. And I really knew how to take action regarding that issue. I know about um, climate refugees, which was really interesting for me. I didn't know about environmental justice. I didn't know how I was directly impacted. And that was really amazing to learn. It was really fascinating because I really wanted to dive into the topic and learn how I can better the solution for my community, my local community. 
Yeah, I'm going to pay you to be a talking head on a show at some point. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to ask you the next question, but I'm going to ask you to do this time is to take a breath between each statement. So when you hit that period, just take a, um, a pregnant pause before you move on to the next one. Okay. Um, but that the next question is, um, how has your participation in WIVO or NGP impacted your civic identity? I didn't know the importance of my civic duty. I didn't even know that I really had a civic duty before I joined WIVO. I, I learned that as a citizen, just in general, I need to be engaged and I need to be aware of the people around me and these issues. We can't choose to not be informed. We can't choose to not be activists. When we're in a country filled with so much injustice and so much hatred and in need of so much love and, and policy, then you have to become informed and you have to really recognize that you have to go out and vote. You have to inform others to vote and that we can't just move move about life not not being aware of each other's issues, not knowing that there's injustices going on all around us. When I joined WIVO and I learned about that civic duty, I really understood that politics is like, it's essential to really just kind of running this government, especially the way that America goes. And it's just important, especially when you're like a minority and you really wanna make a change and you realize that there's representation needed. So I knew that when I, when I joined WIVO that there was a responsibility, not just for me, but for every American citizen. Powerful words, well said. Um, what do you think the potential is uh, for WIBO and NGP to impact our democracy over time? There's huge potential. Literally every WIBO meeting, I get more and more amazed. Like this generation is so incredible. Like I just sit back and I'm just like, wow, like we are in good hands. Um, there's so much potential because WIBO is, it's, opens to all opinions. Like you don't get many platforms that really just doesn't, that gives voices to marginalized communities. And it really allows you to just speak, um, speak what's on your mind, share what you know, get different perspectives, engage in all types of conversations. And it's a supportive environment. You're never gonna feel like shamed for what you're saying. You're always gonna be like, well, I agree, I disagree. It's like, it's a really just good conversation that it really prepares us since we are the future. And that's what I love about it the most is that it's youth and it's really focused on the youth because they, because Rival understands that we have this future in our hands and we have to know how to protect it. So they give us the resources to do that. Wow, I love that. I'm gonna go off the books in a second, but before I do, I'm gonna ask you another question that was in our, um, in our uh, script, which is what are your future plans and has NGP or your involvement with WIVO impacted your plans for the future? It's definitely impacted my plan for the future. I definitely envision a lot more social change like I always envision that but I guess like it's more like a day-to-day -day basis like I really just want to spend like every day of my life devoting like to something to help better somebody's life I know that there's there's so much injustice in the world and I think when we look on social media we get really get caught up on the things that this world cares about we don't really notice how much like how much is not really like important like the things that are really important just bettering people's lives and just helping others like that is that's all that really like matters to me and i think being in wivo has really helped me gain the resources that I know how to grow connections and know how to inspire others and engage others in those conversations so that it can become a priority not just for me but for every person on this planet really to engage yourself in some type of issue and with wivo with me it's not just one issue it's every issue it's every injustice that i want to make justice every every fight that, every movement that I wanna be a part of because I'm simply just a person that cares about human beings. So being in WIVO, it's like you get, you, you're you open to that love and you're open to that community that just knows how to really create that change and wants to affect it. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I mentioned I was going to go off script. I am going to go a little off script. Um, my next question is around the skills um, that you've picked up um, participating in YVote. Um, so you talked a little bit about YVote creating a space um, or platform for you to have, um, you know, different conversations with people across different divides and that sort of thing. And I'm just curious to hear more about your take on the skills that you've gained through participating in YVote. I've learned a lot of public public speaking definitely because it's exposed me to many opportunities and media outlets and that's really been helpful because that's something I, I always want to work on because I feel like it's a, it's a useful tool throughout the future and especially I think 
just more behind the scenes organization and research where we really get into the depth of our action groups. We go into these different sources and we go into like these outlines and they really steps to say, this is how you reach out to your politicians. These are the you need to know about. And these like, they give you like the step-by-step. -step. Other other organizations are just gonna tell you, you know, make change, be effective. But, and then and you're just left not knowing how to do that. But Weibull says, here's what you're gonna do. Like here's in depth and like, don't, like, like be serious about it if you're gonna do it. And you really get that push from like your peers and others just to know that here's, we actually have the platform to do it. So why can't we do it? There's nothing stopping us but ourselves. Boom, um, so many mics <laughs> dropped. Um, going off script again. Um, so you mentioned up front um, why you joined LIVO. How, um, how did you learn about LIVO and what was your high school career like prior to LIVO, um, both as a student and as like a, a citizen observing the world? So yeah, I learned about LIVO through my school. Um, prior to LIVO, I was in another like, um, so I was this other social change organizations. I think I really became an interested in social change around eighth grade. I saw this documentary on Netflix and then that's when I just like, it kind of just, I was like, oh wow, like I need to get involved. So, and then after that, I was really just, I was searching, I was searching for something. I was searching for a community and organization that really aligned with my values. And when I found LIVO and I just found like all the incredible things they stand for, I'm like, like, I just felt it was too good to be true. But um, yeah, so I joined, but prior to that, it was just, I was uninformed. Like I knew I had interest, but I didn't know where to take that. Cool, 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 cool. Um, and um, I'm trying to think if I have any other questions for you. Sandra, is there any, um, are there any other questions in the document that you think we should discuss? Oh, I do have a question. Um, what what is your vision for the future, Mia? What do you want to see happen in the world? And um, what do you want our political institutions to do over the next four or eight years? Wow, I guess one the big thing for me is kind of acknowledging like the conversations that we've had. I think something that I've been really thinking about is that people like we, we keep having these conversations. People say these conversations need to be made. We need to be listened to. It's like, and I heard something, I heard something on a show. It really caught my attention. It's still like a, like, like minorities and black people, like we're screaming and it's like, and America still doesn't hear us. And America needs to get to a point where they can hear our whispers and not our yells. And it's, it was, that was so powerful to me. And it, I just feel like America and like just this world in general needs to acknowledge things. Like understand that these conversations have been made. These movements have shown like we have the solutions. We simply just need the right people in government to implement these policies. So it's like, it's not like we're waiting for something. All of this can easily be done. It can easily like be done within the span of like, like you said, four to eight years, but it's just having those right people that are gonna take people over power, that's gonna take life over money. Like that's not gonna like value the wrong things and understand like humanity and what's just and what's needed just for every human life. Yep. Yep, that, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, Sandra, any other questions? Well, now you can understand why I was like, we need Mia and her full chin <laughs> and her full voice because this is a voice that needs to be heard, you know, all across America and all around the world. Um, no, Laura, I thought your questions were great and comprehensive and, and Mia's answers were even better than the questions. So that's <laughs> exactly, and I could tell the power posing helped. Uh, that was sheer power, you know, yeah. um, no, I think it was, it was great. Thank well, you. Well, Mia, you, you killed it. Uh, that was so good. Um, and you brought us to life in killing it. So, you know, yeah. what did you ask for, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, if you, uh, yeah, I think we're done. Um, so yeah, and I would I say, Mia, you're already going to be at the head of the class. I mean, the irony is, but I mean, it, there'll still be stuff for you, but at tomorrow night's Wivo, we're doing sort of public speaking and advocacy storytelling. Um, <laughs> so, um, Mia, it'll be an opportunity to go. I, I want you to think tomorrow night about like how to go deeper. Like if there's something, whether it's like a particular facet of environmental justice that you really want to mm -hmm. think about, how do I tell the story of this? 
or if there's something where, you know, you just want to workshop something because one of the nice things about tomorrow night is that the folks there, what they do for a living is give people feedback and they're very rigorous. Um, and so, you know, you're such a gifted speaker that probably what happens most of the time is that you don't get a lot of feedback because people are just sort of dazzled, uh, <laughs> and as they should be. Um, and so like, let's think if there's a place where you're like, oh, you know, I don't talk about this thing because I don't feel as confident talking about this thing. I would say mm -hmm. tomorrow night is the opportunity. Like tonight was not that tonight we wanted your best stuff and you gave it to us and that's yeah. perfect. Um, and then tomorrow to sort of think about like, where, what are the things that you're uncomfortable talking about that like time to workshop and get feedback can be really helpful because it's not, you know, it's not public. It's not, you know, going on our website or anything. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that it's valuable time for you um, to grow. Okay. Definitely. I, resume the recording. Cool. Um, so um, my last question for you, and I'm asking this question because um, we have the videos that we're planning, but I think that there's also an opportunity for like students, like profile videos potentially. And so it could be the case that we splice this information together and like a story that like is the Mia story <laughs> um, or like is highly focused on like your experience, which not to put any pressure on anything, but like, we'll see how this plays out. Um, but it would be helpful to have you saying like, hi, my name is Mia, like, um, I'm like in this grade, I go to this school. Um, so if you could say that, and then um, after that, would love to hear a little bit about your high school experience and how WIVO intersects with or is additive to that experience. Okay, so like say that now? Uh, yes, and okay. you can and take a pause between both. So hi, my name is Mia, I'm a, in this grade at this school, and then take a long breath and then say like, high school, my high school is like this, why vote does this or it like adds this to my high school life. Okay. Hi, my name is Mia Payne. I'm a, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mia Payne. I go to Town Unlimited High School and I'm in the 11th grade. At my school, we are a diverse and inclusive community that focuses on performing arts. And being in WIVO allows me to take some of the ideas and world issues into my school and really just have conversations with my peers that are important and change making. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I feel like I messed up on that. Do you want to try it one more time? Just okay. It? Okay, cool. I will just underscore, take your time. Um, you don't need to, to rush it. You've got so much great stuff to say, but say it slower than feels natural, even if it feels like you're gonna bore people or leave them behind. We're hanging on your every word. So you do not need to worry about rushing through it. You know, just sort of like feel your full power and share it with us. Okay. Hi, my name is Mia Payne. I go to Town Unlimited High School and I'm in the 11th grade. I go to a diverse and inclusive community that goes that focuses on performing arts and being in Y Vote has allowed me to take some of the world ideas and change making policies that I've learned and take that into my community and into my school community and have conversations with my peers that are groundbreaking and change making. How did that feel? Did that, that feel good? Felt, that felt better. That felt better. <laughs> cool. Yay. Great. All right. I think um, wait, can I do that? Hi. <laughs> <laughs>